Oh, there they Whoa, whoa. This is a grazing exclosure. The bison may just demolish it. When we did a normal routine check, we noticed she was kind of by herself. Here's the deal. I think she's in labor. She makes me nervous because of the situation she faced last year. Let's smell this. Woo! What does it smell like? Ugh. Happy to see us. Here's some more gum. <laughs> Forum took off that way. Hey, Christy. Just up. I think they're happy to see us this evening. So we figured out we only saw half of the herd and they're all jazzed up. We're always wondering why they're jazzed up. Well, here's part of the problem. Half of the herd is shut out. They're right here, away from everyone. And uh, they, these guys were basically alerting us that there was something going on. There was an issue. So they're trapped out. This is why you have to tie back the gates. And I didn't. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. Needs to be tied back. Bell Star, are you gonna ever gonna have your baby? Jackie, think that one will work? I think these have seen better days. So is that one. 
all that is gonna end up right here. Just give me a second. All right, I know some of you may be confused, but you're like, Dusty, what are you doing? Well, what I just created is called a grazing exclosure. If you know where I'm at, well, I'm surrounded by bison right now at the Ponderosa, but this area, don't give me that look. Yes. This area we burnt about a month ago. It's been covered in blackberries for several, several years, way before we even got the Ponderosa. It's been covered. You can see this like little war zone, essentially. It's still super black, but there's a lot of little growth coming in and it's exciting. So that's what I'm doing. This is a grazing exclosure. We're closing a portion of this off. Um, and if you wanna see something funny, watch me try to untangle a field fence. So some of you probably have your own ideas of how to make an exclosure, but this is old field fence that well, I think was at the cabins and I brought it over here to the Ponderosa and I'm like, I'm not gonna recycle this or waste it. I'm gonna use it, right? So on stuff like this, now it could be destroyed in moments. After we leave the pasture, the bison may just, just demolish it. It's okay. This is old and I'm just repurposing it. I'm being cheap here. I'm not trying to keep bison in here, okay? Now something that would be more sturdy is panels. Um, like cow panel. Probably could have done that. Lots of people use those, but they're not gonna be here for very much longer. As soon as we work them, they're going out and grazing in the burn unit. So the point of this is, twice as tall as that ATV is up as tree heights. It was insane. We sprayed it, we waited a year, we burn it, and now all this fresh growth is coming through and these guys are on it. Naturally, that's what they do. They go to the burn spots. But what I wanna test is the growth of this. And why I'm exposing this is I did half of what was no blackberries and just pasture. It doesn't look pretty by the way, don't judge me. Remember, this is just a little study. This is normal pasture right in here where there were no blackberries. You can come over here and look. You can see the blackberries, blackberries blackberry roots and there's even some fresh blackberries coming up i knew that was going to happen it's part of i probably need to add some t-posts and stretch this out just a little bit more make it a little bit more durable for them but what i want to know is what comes back up in here when we removed the blackberries is what i want to know and then my plot a is here plot b is here so there's no bias right between normal pasture where the blackberries were so i wanted to get both types of land one that's been covered many many years lots of protection and then just a normal pasture where the animals would go and graze and stomp and poop and pee as you see there's some poop in there we wanted to get all that in there that's why we're doing this what we're going to do we're going to do a little test plot here now if you guys don't remember just a couple of weeks ago, Marissa and I took some soil samples uh, through Redmond using our soil test kit. Awesome, we did three samples. We sent them off to the lab and we got our results within like four days. Well, we've got the breakdown for you. I'm gonna show you our breakdown of what's going on in our soil. We took samples right here in the area where all these bison were. They analyzed our soil and we've got some things missing. We've got some issues we've got to really focus on. And we'll talk about some of the solutions to that, but we may have a solution that we're gonna do a little study on. We're gonna use something by Redmond's called soil amendments. As we're gonna go over that, we've got some great mineral that's gonna go on this little test plot and other parts of the Ponderosa, and maybe even save it for a garden here in the future. We're gonna do it for Marissa. So whenever we did our soil test kit, we did our three samples, you have to register your kits first. Well, then you send your data off and we got our results back and here it is right here. You get this nice little dashboard and we've got our three different units right here. So I'm gonna click on these and you get a breakdown and you can actually compare your reports. And there you go. So in pasture three, which is where the Big Joe herd has been for most of the winter time. And this is also where we did our recent burn of burning all the blackberries. Three things that we always look at is N, P, and K. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Those are kind of the three main macronutrients that we look at. But when you look at this bar graph, you got your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. 
are in the low range. It's pretty easy to look on this data that we do have a lot of nutrients that are low. But one thing that really sticks out is the calcium. It is extremely high calcium but our pH is just below an optimal range. Click back and then we're gonna look at pasture two. Pasture two is where we planted our very first cover crop. It's up here just south of the barn. We look at it, another N, P, and K. Very low, way below optimal range. Calcium, very high again. Micronutrients are very low. Iron, manganese, and zinc copper and then our ph is actually in the perfect optimal range looks good for pasture too obviously going to need some np and k in that pasture as well and then we're going to go to the actual burn unit and when i say the burn unit this is the 70 acres that we burned with a prescribed burn in 2022 np and k super low very very low blown out of the water extremely high calcium not sure why, again, the calcium is so high. And then the sodium, Na, was right there in optimal range. Is about the only macronutrients in optimal range. But our pH is high, and it's just at the edge of that optimal area. And if you look over on the right here, we can see what's high and what's low. And then they also give you a fertilizer recommendation. You can see some of the things that we've got to work on and what our soil needs for our plants to All thrive. Right, so with our soil amendments, we've got soil build and then we have a soil grow. So this one's interesting. This has a lot of minerals straight from Utah, humates in it, sea minerals, volcanic ash, Redmond conditioner, which can also be fed in your feed, and then poultry manure right here. So this is soil grow and this can be used in your gardens, raised beds, pasture, lawn, ornamental grasses, and containers. You can use these products in any of those methods of growing plants, however you like. We use both of these today. This is pretty much your basic minerals from Redmond. This is minerals plus some poultry manure. We're gonna throw these in two different spots. We're just gonna chicken feed. We're gonna throw it out a little bit. But this treats 400 square feet as one bag for the grow. For the build, you got 640 square feet and this entire pouch. You can do it kind of different ways. What's important about our soil, now that we've seen our results, we know what we have missing here. What these are for, this is gonna be basically a catalyst for the soil and the plants because there's a lot of organisms, there's a lot of microbes, there's a lot of science going on in our soil. And as it starts to heat up, a lot of that's getting active. Well, this is gonna be basically gonna be something that wakes these plants up and wakes the soil up and gets it to move and grow. And so we've gotta have all these organisms in the soil be broken down so that our nutrients can be used. And that's why we created this exclosure here. Let me smell this. Woo! What does it smell like? Oh, that's good. There's definitely some chicken poop in there. I'm actually really excited about this. If we could get access to chicken poop to get on our ranch, that would be sweet. But right here, we I mean- We have a sizable herd. <laughs> yeah. Can we not Look utilize? Volcanic ash, minerals, straight from Utah, America, with some chicken poop. I like it. So we're gonna start with this one first. This is like pasture. Do you have some string? You could run like a- oh, parts of it? Yeah, like a hard line. So this is kind of our host uh, plot, and this is, I don't know, the active plot. Yeah, I agree. Let's see if we have some string. All right. Mm. This smells. First, had the idea of using a string here to kind of divide this up. We're gonna do one side with our soil grow. Now I'm just gonna kind of chicken feed this. So I hope you're not downwind. Uh, I don't know. Am I? Help me. <laughs> Which way is it blowing? Oh, oh, whoa! <laughs> Sorry, I meant. You have that little spreader. I do, but I think it'll throw it everywhere. I'm just gonna get a little lower here, down to the ground. Yeah. Look at that, eating on the trees, Justin. Who is? I don't know what number that is. I can't see it. <laughs> tree is that? Pecan? It's a hackberry. Oh, it's a hackberry. Not a very good tree. Well, I'm excited to get my little garden things done and try it in there, too. We're going to keep some of these. We've got a couple more bags 
going to use it in the garden. Yeah. They heard the bag ruffle. That's they exactly did. what they it is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Blunt, you better watch it, buddy. Just our soil build. Humate sea minerals, volcanic ash, and Redmond conditioner. Mm -mm. This one, oh, this one actually smells good. Bullet. Bullet, you're not going to do anything. This one smells good. Oh, it does. It smells very uh, minerally with a little less, bit of... Uh, less chicken poopy. Yeah, and I can smell the volcanic. Well, there, she's going to smell of it. Out, buddy. Come here, bullet. They are curious for sure. Yeah, they are. Uh, well, some of these minerals would be the same as what you put out to them, right? As uh, bisonani, yes. A lot of these minerals in here. In the conditioner, correct? The conditioner would be part of conditioner and our bisonani that we actually feed them for minerals. I mean, I could probably pour this out and they would lick it. That's what I was wondering if why they were all over here. So they, it smells familiar. And What we're doing is something that you can see is pretty easy. Obviously, we're out in the middle of a pasture and trying to see what this does to our soil life and our plants because I know there's going to be regrowth right now, and that's one of the best time to use this during the spring. But you can see how easy this is. Obviously, on a windy day, it may not be recommended, but to ah, apply this. Ah. I don't think that's going to work, buddy. Ah. Hold on, babe. I don't want them coming in this little contraption here. Whether you're doing this in your garden or some of your raised beds, it's easy. I mean, I'm not doing it the professional way, technical way. Uh, we do have a spreader, but because it's so windy, I really didn't want to lose a bunch of it in the wind. But you can mix it. You could pull it, pour it directly into your soil in your raised garden and mix it in with your topsoil. And this is a pretty easy way to do it. I think you're fooling anyone here, buddy. So we have our test plot here. This is no Redmond minerals at all on this. No grow, no rebuild, bare ground. So the bison can't graze it. Here, this is just protected so we can see the difference between what is ungrazed. So we got soil grow on one half soil build on this half now that we've built the exclosure we've got two plots essentially one giant plot it don't look pretty if you've ever dealt with used field fence it's just it's a straight kick in the butt hopefully get some rain tonight this is going to be a test trial for us never used it before we're excited to use more of the soil amendments the grow and the build in marissa's garden we're going to do that pretty soon and it's going to be at the ponderosa barn which is where we can see the bison i'm um, excited to play with those products on an actual garden so if you have a garden or you're working on your pasture or anything like that you can use the soil and the build from redmond agriculture and uh, try to wake the soil up and get everything going get those nutrients start moving let the soil do what it's supposed to do and really get what those plants need and get that growth so don't forget guys go to redmondagriculture.com you can get your soil test kit and the soil amendments all at redmondagriculture.com don't forget to use our code dumbbar all right use the code dumbbar and you can get a special discount and you guys can help support us thank you guys all right i think today is the day bell stars having her calf been worried about it because of last year's situation, of course. I know I keep talking about it, but it makes Marissa and I very nervous. But been flying the drone. It's a great way for us to check without stressing the animals out. We can sit right up here and fly the drone back there. 
you can zoom in from a distance, get kind of up close to see what is going on with her. It's just a safe way to check them. Instead of, I don't like driving out in the pasture because the herd gets worked up and then the mamas can get worked up. And I don't want Bell Star getting worked up in a stressful situation. So you can film from the drone, take pictures and just check on your animals. It's the easiest thing. Cause that's just kind of how I've been doing it, what we've been doing. So, but my point is signs are showing and uh, I think she's gonna have a calf today. The only bad part about what's going on is it's in the evening. We checked her this morning when we did a normal routine check. We noticed she was kind of by herself. And uh, that's a that's another sign that these females will, these bison females will do. They'll kind of go off and do things themselves away from the herd. Well, she's kind of around the herd now, but it's evening time. I mean, she looks like she's getting close. So basically, here's the deal is uh, I think she's in labor but it's it's just a moment of time now and uh, with these animals you typically don't have to do anything with them they just do their thing like in nature just like deer or elk or moose these animals don't need any help unlike cattle sometimes let mother nature take its course she makes me nervous because of the situation she faced last year and i actually saw some things happen um and we lost the calf so it's kind of in god's hands and um you just hope everything goes like it should because we're gonna go home and we'll be back tomorrow and hopefully we see a red dog up and adam with uh, bell star and so i think this will be her fourth baby which will be pretty nice to see so anyways all right guys we'll see you all in the morning mm -hmm.